All right, well, everyone, welcome to a special Sabbath service uh, at the home of the Crouches. We, we thank them for their hospitality. And then uh, I guess next week they'll be done with whatever they're doing at the church so we can have our space back. Um, anyway, why don't I just uh, open in prayer? Oh, by the way, I wanted to point out that we have two visitors. That, well, they're not visitors. They just hardly ever see them. I'm always glad to see you guys here. Anyway. I'll just do an opening prayer, and then uh, we'll sing a hymn and proceed. Your Father in heaven, we thank you so much for well, everything, everything you do, everything you are. We thank you for uh, sending your only son to uh, pay the penalty for our sins so that we can be reconciled to you and spend the rest of eternity in fellowship with you. We ask you to come among us today, send your Holy Spirit here while we worship, just to edify us and uh, accept our adoration. In your name, Jesus. So, our first hymn. It's my favorite one. That's why I repeat it every time I do a sermon. So we can learn it by heart, but uh, it's how great thou art. Ah, when Christ shall come with shout of acclamation and take me home. I was at a promise keepers years ago, back when they had those. And there we were, a stadium full of us singing this song. And we got to that verse. Someone down there shouted out loud enough to be heard over 40,000 men all singing at the top of their lungs and out of tune. He shouted, and we, when we got to, when Christ shall come, a shout of acclamation and take me home, he shouted out, it will be victory. And it will. Our Lord's victory that he shares with us. Anyway, Annie said she would uh, do the scripture reading. Believers are salt and light. You are the salt of the earth, but if the salt loses its flavor, how shall it be seasoned? It is then good for nothing but to be thrown out and trampled underfoot by men. You are the light of the world, a city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden, nor do they light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a lampstand, and it gives light to all those who are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for this day. We thank you that we, were we are able to come and worship with the church family, and we ask for blessings for all that are here. Matthew 5.13 says, You are the salt of the world. We are. Not that we should be, or can be, should want to be. We are the salt of the world. Period. And 14 says, We are the light of the world. We are the light of the world. Shining out from the city on the hill. Okay, but what are we there for? Why are we there shining light, that light out? Well, it tells us in uh, the second part of verse 14, or I'm sorry. It tells us uh, that, uh, yeah, 14 and 15. 
you are the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden. It cannot be hidden. We are the light of the world. We are shining out from that city on the hill for everyone to see for better or for worse. Whether we uh, are shining that light the way we are supposed to or not. Continues on in 15. Nor does anyone light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a lampstand, and it gives light to all who are in the house. And what should we do about this? Verse 16. Let your light shine before men in such a way that they may see your good works and glorify your Father who is heaven, in heaven. That's what we're supposed to be doing. We're supposed to be glorifying our Father who is in heaven by showing the world our good works. And hopefully, not any bad works. Although we falter once in a while. We were created fellowship with God in this world and for the rest of eternity. People, want, we should want people to see us doing that. Maybe we can draw them in or at least give them no excuse for not letting the Father draw them in. In Genesis 3, verse 8, look at that. It talks about what uh, the first human beings were doing in the garden before they fell from grace. Actually, this is right after they fell from grace but it alludes to what they must have been doing before that. It says, basically when Adam and Eve, when they heard the sound of the Lord walking in the garden in the cool of the day, and the man and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord, God, among the trees of the garden. Why'd they hide themselves? They knew, they realized they were naked. And when they heard the sound of God walking in the garden, they recognized it. They knew that was him. And they said, well, there he is. My goodness. And we're naked. We've got to hide. But now, the point is that while there isn't any place that I know of in the Bible that says that God routinely walked with Adam and Eve in the garden, up until they fell from grace. This verse strongly implies it. I mean, they, they recognize the sound of God walking in the garden. Sounds like it was something they got to do until, until. Once, once mankind fell from grace, we didn't get to walk with God in the garden anymore. Basically, we were doomed. We separated from him for forever, unless God made a way for us to be reconciled to him. He had to do that. We could not. God did make a way. gave us his only son pay the penalty of our sins something that only god could have done we did not have the capacity to bridge the gap 
between us and God that had been created when we separated ourselves from him by, re by our rebellion. Only he had the capacity to do that, but he had to make a sacrifice. He had to pay our debt. So, since he did pay our debt, and since we do now get to walk with him, or at least with the Holy Spirit in this world until we are rejoined with God for the rest of eternity, couldn't we who are saved not want to be the light of the world? Didn't we want to be the light of the world? Are we willing to be the light of the world, shining from that city on the hill? Is it possible for us to be the light of the world, shining? from that city on the hill? My answer to these questions is no, no, and no. At least in the sense that uh, it doesn't matter whether or not we want to be that light shining from the city on the hill. Whether we want to be or not, we are. We are. It says that very plainly in verse 14 of chapter 5 of Matthew. Um, I know there's, you know, I don't know, maybe there are translations that render it a little differently, but I, I like to work out of the uh, New American Standard Bible, 1995 update, and that's considered to be a, a very literal translation of God's word. And it just says, it doesn't say we should want to be the light of the world. It doesn't say we should be willing to be the light of the world shining from that city on the hill. And in, in, in fact, it's not really that it's possible for us to be that light on the hill. We are that light on the hill. We are in the kingdom of God, we who are saved. We are in the kingdom of God. We have repented and accepted Christ's payment of our moral debt on our behalf. We are the light of the world. We are. That's the answer to all those questions. We are, we are, we are. We can, if for whatever reason we want to, out of fear, cowardice, or just laziness, I don't know. We can, if we want to, hide that light under a basket or whatever. We could filter that light, change the color of that light. But in a read nine fourteen again, we are the light of the world, and it's and it goes on to say we are it's it doesn't say you're in the city on the hill. 
but obviously we are, says a city set on a hill cannot be hidden. So whatever we do, whether we shine that light brightly or whether we hide it or try to change it, change the color, we will be seen doing that by the whole world. And they will draw certain conclusions about us and about our Savior and our God by the, that behavior. We should be magnifying that light as much as we're as much as we're able to. I don't know how really we could magnify light, because I think that light is God's love shining through us. I don't think we can get shine brighter than God, but if we could, we should. We should be doing every we can, everything we can to focus that light. We should put a parabolic reflector behind the light to direct as much of the full intensity of that light out into the world that is around the city on the hill where we reside. We should do that to focus people's attention on what's going on out there in that world. What is good, what is bad, but most of all, draw attention. Draw the attention of the world to our city on the hill. We should use it the way, use that light the way searchlights were often repurposed for use in the civilian world immediately after World War II. I think you've probably seen images of uh, searchlights that they used in London during the Blitz, where there'd be one plane, one German bomber flying overhead and all these searchlights, boom, 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 focused in on it and just into aircraft fire, pouring in up there to down that one aircraft. I would hate to be the guy in that aircraft when singled me out. That's what they used the searchlights for, to focus on something that was going on and deal with it. Well, we had searchlights here in America. I mean, even though it was unlikely that we would be bombed. But we had them, and we probably made a lot of those searchlights they sent to uh, England. But after the war, the military had a bunch of searchlights they didn't know what to do with. They didn't need any more. They had radar. It had been developed where it was sophisticated enough they could use that to zero in on a target. So. Those searchlights ended up in the hands of uh, the civilians, civilian companies, and they took those searchlights and they, I don't know whether they sold them to uh, other businesses or just rented them to other businesses. But um, they would use them to draw attention to that business. I mean, we we don't see that anymore. I, I, it's been years since I've seen a searchlight just at night going around up in the city. I think they just decided, well, we've got enough aircraft flying around that we don't want to blind the pilots when they're flying over or something. I don't know. But uh, I used to see it all the time. I remember, well, the way, oftentimes you'd see like not just one, but you'd see a bunch of them all, you know, just and all coming out of the same source so that you know like i don't know in hollywood at a big premiere or something like that but you also saw a couple or sometimes one out there uh, i remember when i was i had to be only six or seven because we still lived in littleton colorado one weekend night when you know family had gone out to dinner and we were driving home and saw one out there in the distance and my dad asked my mom 
you want to go see what it is? And she said, sure. We drove, and zeroed in on it and found it. And it was just a car dealership. They were having a sale. But, but uh, like I said, that's what they used them for. And we should be shining our light out into the world in that way to draw attention to the city on the hill. And yeah, we could sit out there and spotlight things that are going on that we think out there in the world, outside the city, that we think people should know about and might be edifying to them, convicting or whatever. But most of all, since that is, that light I, I believe is just God's love shining out into the world from us. I think that uh, I think we should use it most of all to draw attention to his city on the hill where we reside. Like I said, because that's God's love shining out of the world. What does John 3.16 say? I'll look it up. I probably could do it almost by heart. But God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal light we should be drawing attention to that any way we can you know I, I wish I could think of you know ways that we could really get people's attention even if it causes some trouble for us I uh, have felt for so long that it's time. It's time for a revival in America. We need it desperately. And now, because of uh, certain events over the last few days, I think we have a golden opportunity. I mean, I was really excited when in Ashbury, they had the, what they called the Ashbury outpouring. In uh, Asbury, Kentucky, I believe. I think we should pray that we have our own outpouring of the Holy Spirit for the world to see. In any case, I think the last thing we should be doing is hiding the light or filtering it changing its color. We should be shining that light out in the world, draw attention to us, the inhabitants of that city on the hill, so that we can, as the scripture verse says, glorify the Father. Glorify our King, our Lord, our Creator, who is in heaven. That's what we are here in this world for. To glorify the Father. To let everyone know that He has offered redemption to all of us so that we can the rest of eternity with him face to face in heaven fellowshipping with him and glorifying him forever forever amen. amen we are that city on the hill we are the light shining out into the darkness so let us let's let our light shine let our light shine